I'm Denise with Artist Her Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just, so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice, lighter, you know, Softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey, Nisi. Hey, Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool, and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose. It might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and I'm so happy to be here with you guys today to create some cherry blossoms. Ooh, it's that time of year again. So what do you guys know about cherry blossoms other than they're beautiful and pink and fun to create? right? So I'm going to be using you guys today some really simple supplies. I'm going to be using my favorite mixed media pad. You can paint, use crayons, colored pencils, magic marker. They rip out. You can keep them inside of it and you can change it to any format. So you can use it vertical or horizontal. Totally up to you. You guys just decide. And again, you can use so mixed media means any type of supply. You can use watercolor paint, acrylic paint, oil pastels. Again, whatever it is that you want. And I'm going to be using my Cali Art markers today, which has a variety of colors. Again, I want you guys to use your favorite. So here's what I want to tell you about cherry blossoms. So the cherry blossom is the flower of the cherry tree. And in many countries around the world, it's come to symbolize the transition from winter to spring. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. We keep going back and forth from winter to spring to winter to spring. And today I woke up, we had a winter weather advisory, and now the sun is out and it's 50 degrees. You never know, right? That's Cleveland. I don't know where you guys are. You can tell me where you are, but that's just the way it goes. The tree is native to the Himalayas and is currently found throughout temperate zones of the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in Europe, China, Japan, Korea, the United States, and Canada. Do you guys know that? The cherry blossom, or sakura, is the national flower of Japan and holds a lot of symbolism in the Japanese culture. That's why I have my little Japanese girl here with us today. We'll bring her out again later. Okay, she's, she's ready to do the cherry blossoms, okay? Because of its rich symbolism, the cherry blossom is commonly featured in Japanese art, film, anime, and tattoo design. And I'm going to show you guys some examples of that as well, right? First, let me show you up close what cherry blossoms look like just in case you've never seen them. So there are different kinds of pinks and pale pink and deeper pink. Look at that. Beautiful, 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 right? So today, from the end of March to early May, cherry blossoms bloom throughout Japan. During this time, it's traditional to engage in Hanami flower viewing. That means you go outside and look at the flowers. A custom where they enjoy picnics and parties under the trees. Isn't that fun? That sounds fun to me. So um, I am going to start drawing. So warm up your hands. And again, you guys can use pencils. You can use markers. I want. I would recommend you guys start with a pencil so you don't make a mistake. Why am I going to use black marker? So you can see it better on the camera. Okay, I want you to be able to see it better. My format, again, is going to be horizontal, but you can do it any direction that you want. And I would use, again, gold light if you're going to use a pencil or marker. And you can always use a pencil first and then go over it with marker later. I'm going to start from the bottom 
about a fourth from the bottom, like a, about this far. Can you see this right here? I'm going to do a horizontal line across the bottom. It's not perfect. There's my horizontal line. Okay. Somewhere close to the bottom. So you have, actually, let me show you guys the picture we're going to do. So you know what I'm doing here. Get my sketchbook open. So that horizontal line that I just drew, that's going to be the line here, right? The water line where the bridge meets the water and then below it is the reflection. So that's what that horizontal line is. And then I'm going to do the arch. So this is this opening of the bridge here, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the side. So I'm going to do this part of the bridge, the stone part. You ready? So I'm going to come from the side. I'm going to arch up, over, and back across. Is it perfect? No. That's why you use a pencil if you want to erase it and make it a little bit more even. So it has balance and symmetry. But again, we're not going for a perfect bridge here, right? Or a perfect artwork. We want to have fun and learn as we go. All right. So now, um, again, I'm using a finer point, but you guys, I, I'm hoping can sketch it out in pencil before you go into it with whatever it is you're going to color. Now I'm going to do the railing okay, on the bridge. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to follow that line. Right. And then I'm going to put little vertical lines in here. So this is going to be my railing. Vertical, vertical, vertical. I'm going to leave a little space here for my light post. A little space here for my light post. I'm going to do three lights. That one's a little close together. Yeah. Again, I could put another one there. We're not, we're not going for perfection. It's okay if you make mistakes. I make them all the time, right? So, okay. Now I'm going to do, and again, that's the basics. You don't have to keep up with me. It just gives you a general idea. And now I'm going to go into my lamp post. So I'm going to do a vertical line vertical line because it's a little bit wider and then right here at the base it's almost like a letter v and then i'm going to do the circle for the light let's try it again so i'm going to do a vertical line and a vertical line and then the letter v and then i'm going to do a circle here for the light i'm going to put one more in so let's do it right here Wherever you have space, vertical, vertical, letter V, and then a circle. And you could have more light posts. You could have less because, again, it's up to you. And now I'm going to kind of sketch out my trees. These are going to be my cherry blossom trees. Ready? So I'm going to start here with a line and go out. And here with a line, go up out and over and your branches can go off the edge of the page they can go out as far as you want them to i'm gonna make this one go up over i'm gonna do another tree on this side so i'm gonna go up over there up and over Add as many branches as you want to. I can even make the branches go off the page and then come down and overlap. Again, even come down into here. 
So this is more giving it depth, right? And so this one will be coming off the side and down in front of the bridge, right? And then it could be night, it could be day, it could be sunset. And what's going to happen is everything that you do up here is going to reflect on the water. Let me put another branch, a little branch over there. If you want, you could add little shrubs in here. You don't have to. Again, it's up to you. And if you want to add some stones, and you don't even have to do all of them, they could be stones, they could be bricks. You could do some of them just to give the illusion that there's some texture there. They can go right off the edge. It depends on how much detail you want to add to it, right? And I would do the stones, grays, browns, white, black. Remember, you want to have contrast around that area. Again, I can, you want to make sure that this looks like this is all the stone. All the way up, right? So again, you guys decide how detailed it is. Now, did you notice I didn't even put the leaves? I didn't even put, I don't, I should call them blossoms, you guys, because we're doing cherry blossoms. I didn't even sketch the blossoms in there because I'm going to actually do it with my color. But if you want to sketch them in there, you can. I'll just show you. Like If I wanted to put some shapes in there for where I'm going to color in, I can kind of sketch out some of those blossoms. Or I can just add the color there. I'll show you both ways. So there are some shapes for my leaf, for my blossoms, right? Or I could just do it with color later. And as they overlap the railing, that gives it the illusion, right? That again, of more depth. So it's going um, in the foreground. So the foreground would be this big branch in front and the water is the foreground. And then as it goes to the background, it gets lighter or paler. All right. Oh, let me tell you a little bit more. Japan gifted over 3,000 cherry trees to the United States in 1912, many of which were planted in Washington, D.C. The National Cherry Blossom Festival is a popular tourist attraction. I have not gone to that. I need to go to that. I think I even might have a picture of that. That's on my to-do list, right? So here is, actually, this is um, a painting of... Washington with the Cherry Blossom Festival, right? And I'm going to show you guys some more pictures to inspire you. These are some famous artworks with cherry blossoms in there. Oh, there's my girl. Look at that. There's my little girl. She's not little. There's my girl. See her? Look at You're in the painting. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> okay. So... These are all famous artworks with cherry blossoms in them, right? And did you know that, oh, I think I had, hold on one second, I want to show you. In Japan, even McDonald's has been known to celebrate cherry blossom season. One year they offered the cherry blossom burgers featuring pink buns. Can you imagine that? And guess what? Here it is. So this is the McDonald's cherry blossom uh, burger. Okay. And it's got a pink bun. Interesting, right? I don't know what it tastes like though. Do you think it would taste good? So in Macon, Georgia, it's actually cherry blossom capital of the world. That's in the United States, you guys. Um, the city features as many as 300,000 cherry blossom trees. Oh my gosh, that's wild, right? So it's actually right here 
in the United States in Georgia. That would be another great destination place to go. All right. So what are you guys going to use to color your artwork? So again, you could sketch it out as much as you want to. And remember, the background is going to be lighter. Now, if you want to make it dark, you can do it dark like it's nighttime, but then think about what colors you're going to do my, your trees. So you can do your trees brown, but I'm actually going to do my trees black and I'm going to do it later. So right now I want to do my background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a nice light blue. That's, let's see. So I don't know how many blues you guys have. I have this amazing set here so I have a variety of blues and remember I want it to be lighter in the background let's see how light let me just check it out and see how light oh that's pretty dark huh I don't want it that dark because remember I want contrast let's try this one it's better right that's a pretty bright uh that's a bright blue but I can even mix them together. You guys decide what kind of blue you want. And I can even leave areas of the white showing through. You could add color some clouds in there. And you're going to color in between the railing, again, to make it look like the sky is back there. Do you like that blue? I'm going to try a lighter blue. Let me see if I can find a lighter blue. Even lighter. This looks like a good one. I'm just experimenting here. So it's a little bit lighter. You see that? A little bit lighter? Which one do you like better? And again, I like that texture of some of the white showing through. I could even find a, look at, look at all my colors, oh my gosh. I kind of like mixing them too. So you guys could even mix them, whether you're using crayon, this one's a little bit darker. Oh, I was gonna make it glow yellow. Okay, see, I forgot. So, you guys, I don't want to color it. No, it's okay if you already did color it, but I want it to make look it look like my light posts are glowing. So, I'm going to put some yellow around it as if the lights are on. So, that would be it. It's probably, it's probably later at night, dusk maybe. That's okay. No one's going to know, but you and me don't tell anybody. Here, I forgot too. So if I put yellow over the blue, it's going to look green, right? So it's kind of glowing green, but it looks cool. All right, now I can go back into it and do some more blue, right? So it just depends on how much pink you want. I want to really fill up my set with a lot of pink. I'm just making it look different than the other one because I want to try all these different blues I have. You guys tell me which ones you like the best. Let's see what's going on with this one. 
This one might be too dark. Yeah, it's kind of dark, right? And why does it matter to me that I don't want it to be too dark? Well, because I want to have contrast. So when I go in and do my lamp post or my trees that are darker, I want them to show up. See how dark that is? And again, it's okay, but I like the lighter ones better. So what am I doing? I am experimenting. And that's okay. So it could look really, really cool with all these different blues and purples in the sky. Or maybe I don't like it as much and I want to do it again. But it's always worth exploring and experimenting. And trying new things. So this is not about looking like mine. This is about looking like yours, using your favorite colors, using your favorite supplies, right? I, I just like to come on and inspire you and share with you some of my favorite things. Maybe I'll put some of that color on this side to balance it out. What do you think? I actually think it looks kind of cool. Okay. Now, my bridge is going to be more of the browns and grays. And don't forget about the sky here. So the sky, I'm going to actually put some pink in so you guys can see it. And then we can do the, the sky too. So that's what's really missing is, are these beautiful cherry blossoms, right? So I'm not even going to get a color in the lines. I'm going around outside of the lines. And look, where it's overlapping pink on the blue, I'm getting a purple, but it looks cool, right? So you could stay inside the lines, or you could, you know, again, I could even put them out to give it the illusion. They don't even have to touch the branches. See that? It's just filling up the space with color. You could do the same thing over here. So right now I'm just using one pink, okay? But I want to put another one in there. I'll put some more. So look, even though I didn't draw them over here, I'm just going to add them. All right. That's a lot of pink, huh? Pink is pretty. That's why I wore pink. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, I want to do this blue down here. Okay. Let's see. That one's dark. Let's try this one. So I'm just kind of filling it in. Again, it doesn't even have to be solid, but it can be if you want it to be. And if you want to mix, you can mix. Let's just see what color this one is. I'll put a little bit of a different blue in there. 
or blue green or a teal. And again, go back into that pink. I'm not going to go on the bridge yet because I want to color that in. My stones, they could be brick stones. And again, you can even just put some loose cherry blossoms. Oops, I went on my bridge, but that's okay. And if you want, again, if you added shrubs or if you want shrubs, you could put little shrubs in here under the bridge, like they're growing on the side. Right? You can even add a couple. You can add like a regular green and a light green, a lime green. You just kind of. I'm going just right outside the line. See that? Some of the blues poking through. I can look at, come out a little bit here. Okay, let's go into the bridge. Let's do the bridge. So again, find some good colors that you guys want to do. You can leave some of your bricks or stones white. You could do some of them brown. I'll just kind of randomly do some brown ones on here. I like to just, while I have the brown in my hand, kind of go around and fill in some of them. See that? do gray. Let's see if I have a good gray here. Got a good gray. You know, you can even use a combination of art supplies. You can use watercolor and color pencil and marker, like all on the same art project. Maybe I put even some more in there just to fill it in a little bit. We really want to make it look like stone or brick, but if you want to do your solid, go ahead. Maybe you use tans, right? Let's see what other colors I have. I'm looking for maybe some lighter colors. This, this is kind of brown. Let's try this one. Does this look green? This does look green. Does that look green on camera? Kind of green. Yeah, I don't want to use green. So what could I do? Yeah, I could color over it, you guys. But if you want to make your bricks green, go ahead. So these have a fine point, which I don't want to use for the brick, and a wide point with like an edge. You see that? So I'm just going to color over that so it looks more gray. So the bridge should, if especially if you're doing stone or brick, it should take you a while, right? Take your time. And again, this is really good practice. So if you don't like it, you could do it again later. So 
So you get the idea. I don't want it to look like a pattern. And mine, I think, is starting to look like a pattern. So don't make it look like a pattern. Make it more organic or natural, right? And then you guys can do the reflection on the water. And oh, let me get those cherry blossoms in there. I want to fill that up, too. Remember? And that pink, you guys, is reflecting on the water. So I'm just going to do some pretty horizontal lines with my marker as if, you know, the pink from the beautiful trees is reflecting on the water. Maybe the sunset or it could be the sunrise. Let's see another pretty color. You guys, again, you guys use any colors you'd like. Pinks and purples would be a good in the reflection too. Horizontal lines. So it kind of gives it the illusion of water. And you can leave some of it white. See that big square there? I want to break that up a little. I don't want it to be so. I'll use the fine point. But you can use, so see that? I want to break that up a little. It looked too not natural. Now the grass is going to reflect over here. Maybe I put a little blue in there too. What do you guys think? Because the blue from the sky should be reflecting down here as well. So let's get a little blue in there. All right, let's put some green in there. Maybe a little bit of a darker green than I've used so far. Let's try this one. I can always change it up a little. How's that, is it too dark? What do you guys think? Yeah, it's kind of dark. Let's try this green. Better? You guys use whatever green you want. Put some on this side. And you can even put some of that green in here, you know, just to, again, to give it depth and texture. Or you can leave it. So maybe I have some dark green and some light green in there. And then put some of that pink. You can put little cherry blossom pinks and leaves. Blossoms. I keep saying leaves, but the little blossoms in here. Right? And I can even find like a maybe more like my shirt color, like a magenta. That would be pretty. Even red, just to deepen it up. Purple. Let's try this one. This is, this is going to look good. And you could put some of the um, petals as if they've fallen on the water, right? They could be leaves, they could be the blossom petals. And you can deepen it up too by putting a darker pink or red in there as well. See that? It just adds to your artwork. And if you don't like it, don't do it.
and something else I want to do. All right. Now I'm going to go, if you guys, I don't know if you noticed, I worked from light to dark. Now I'm going to go with my black and I'm going to go back into it with more color, but I want to show you what happens when I go into it with the black. So I want to do, but you don't have to use black, but I'm going to use my lamp post and my trees in black. Are you ready? And you could have more lamp posts than I have. Or maybe you didn't even do them. Okay. So you see how the black added the contrast. Now let's do the tree. You can see I missed a spot of blue there. So I'm going to go back into it and put the blue in there. You see all of a sudden adding that black, the drama, it just makes it more intense, right? I'm going to use the fine tip now. That's why so many people want to start with black because it's so bold. But if I started everything with black, I would just, my color wouldn't come out as nice. So I like to save it towards the end. And again, you could be using brown if you want to use brown. This one over here. And again, this is coming into the foreground, right? Because it's coming in front of the bridge. You can make as many branches as you want to. Now here, I'm going to re-outline. So if you guys do have that black, you can outline it. You can outline the bottom of your bridge here. So this is where I cover up on my little mistakes. At all those little mistakes, I just go over with the black marker and hide them. You see that? And then you can also go over. Let me do, before I do that, I'm going to put that blue in there. Because I have that big white spot. Hmm. See that? Right in here. And now I can go over the railing. With the bigger black. So it's wider, so it's going to be bolder and it's going to stand out more. But if you want to leave your thing, go ahead. Coming together a little bit more, eh? Now, do you want to leave that bridge white? Go ahead and leave it white. Do you want to color it in gray? You know what else is a great idea, too? Again, if you're using colored pencils, you can even shade it in with a pencil, right? I could even just, if I don't have that many different grays, I love shading with pencil. Watch this. Let's see what happens if I shade it in. So this is what I mean by mixed media. Now I'm using a combination of my Calia art markers and a pencil. 
and it's, you know, giving me a different look. You can leave it white. You can color it in any color you want to. I could even do yellow. Yellow would be pretty. But I'm, I'm trying to get that old stone look. So yellow would not give me that unless it was like sandstone. And so do you see the difference? So I just went, this looks all clean and kind of fresh and bright. And this is looking a little bit more kind of rustic or old. And that's the look I was going for. Because what I want to look fresh and bright are the cherry blossoms. So again, I'm using, as I'm shading this, I'm just using my pencil and I'm going horizontal. And it's okay if you shade a little bit on your stones. See, it softens it up, and then you know what happens then? Then the, the lights look brighter, the little circles. See, I definitely like this side better. What do you guys think? All right. Let's see what else I have to tell you guys. Oh, yeah, I told you all that. And what else I wanted to tell you guys? Well, guess what I have? For you guys today, Sakura's Cherry Blossoms by Robert Paul Weston and Misa Saburi. And this is a cute little book. As you guys could, again, draw with me, color with me, you know, literacy with art I love so much. And so you guys, again, keep coloring, keep creating. I'm going to read to you. Use your favorite supplies and um, keep creating, right? Okay. Now, if you want to come on camera, I'm going to give you a link. And if you've never come on a camera before, you guys, let's see if I can find my group. Hi, Susan, and hi, girls. Emma and Bella are here. Irina, Susan, thanks for watching live, you guys. I appreciate it. I just posted the link. And all right, are you guys ready for the book? You could still be coloring and creating. I love the artwork in this, too. Sakura loves spring, her favorite time of the year. This made perfect sense. Her name means cherry blossom trees that only bloom in spring. More than anything, she loves sitting underneath the tall cherry tree, side by side with Obakin, whose voice was warm like sunshine. And guess what? Emma and Bella are here. Hey. Hello. Hi, girls. Hey, I'm just in a different place. 
Okay, but today I'm doing digital Emma. art. Oh, yeah, digital art. Your bridge looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that yeah. looks great. Sorry about the glare. That's okay. That looks great. Thank you. This is mine so far. I love it. So, you, what are you using to color? Acrylics, and then I'm gonna I'm making two little people on top there. Oh, they're cute. They look great. Thank you. So we have digital art and acrylics today. Yep. That's awesome. And so how's the weather there? Do you guys have cherry blossoms there? No, no. But I'm using a real palette today. I see that. And you know, that's so you have a limited palette. You have pink, white. So you're getting all those different shades with the white, right? Yep. That looks and I'm great. Using black too. Just not yet. Yeah. It's we know what happens if you black. black too early, right? Nope. But I'm mixing it in with the white to make the color I'm using for the um, bridge. So Excellent. That's awesome. I'm using a gray. And this is it. Ooh, that's a good gray. I could use that for my bridge. <laughs> Wish it can come through the screen and onto my canvas. Me too. Into my sketchbook. That's in the future, right? Yeah. In the future, who knows what's going to happen? You may be able to paint on my artwork. Yeah. I wish I could. I'd love to share it with you. Do you guys like to, um, do you like when I read books? Yes. It's very fun and awesome. All right. Well, I went to the library and I got this book, so I'm going to read it to you guys now. Okay. Yes. All right. You guys keep going and I'll start reading. All right. Okay, Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye girls. All right. Look at, oh gosh, look up close. Do you guys see that? In their little um, like pink splotches, there's like little baby white cherry blossoms. You see that? That looks really cool. Together, they sat in the shade of pink petals, watching them flutter. They ate bento box lunches. They told each other stories. I've watched this tree grow all my life, said Obakan. This is how I learned. Seeing these blossoms and bloom is always finest with friends. Sakura's father would soon begin a new job in America. They would fly across the, the sea where a new life awaited. High up in the plane, it seemed like a miracle racing through the clouds, so fluffy and pale, like rice scooped fresh from Obakan's pot. Their new house loomed up on a street with soaring trees, peppering the ground with shadows and light but none had any cherry blossoms. Luke, a quiet boy, lived next door, gazing at night through a telescope. Sakura wanted to say hi, but she was too shy. Sakura's new school was big, boisterous place where each word was new. They nipped and snapped on her tongue like tang of pickled plums. Nico became cat. Sora had become the sky. Kutsu was a shoe. Sakura tried very hard, but she often made mistakes. She missed Obakan. She missed the cherry blossoms, their soft and sweet scent. She missed stories and picnics and the whispers of petals. One day, Luke saw her and, wait, one day, Luke saw her sad and still on the front steps. 
When I'm down, he said, I find it helps to look up. If you want, I could show you. Sakura saw stars, sprinkles of light, and the moon, pearl gray and shining. Its craters were like wide eyes, watching the whole world at once. There's a chance, said Luke. One of those stars has gone dark, but we still see it because its last rays of light have not yet reached us on earth. Flowers are like stars, said Sakura. They blossom, they sparkle, and then they fade. So we treasure them because one day they vanish. Luke stood very still. He had never thought of this. I suppose, he said, when you look up all the time, there are many things you miss. Sakura and Luke, soon they were friends who played, laughed, and went exploring. Sakura, for the first time, had begun to feel at home. Between friends, she found her words were limber and quick with no taste at all. They flipped and curled from her mouth as effortlessly as breath. When the winter came, Sakura's mother told her, we have to go back, not for long, but we must go. Obakan is very ill. Sakura's hometown seemed much smaller than before in the cold, bright sun. Even the tall cherry trees were shivering and leafless. Mother had been right. Obakan was very sick, dozing in her bed. But hearing Sakura's voice, she awoke, her eyes dancing. My little blossom, she cried. Seeing you again makes me so happy. It is all that I wanted, only this and nothing more. This time on the plane, Sakura did not marvel at the cloud, the cotton clouds. She slept dreaming of a sky churning with every season. Luke was excited seeing Sakura again, but when he asked her to go exploring with him, she said no, she was too sad. She was worried too. Might she forget Obakan, her face, her laughter? With no cherry trees nearby, what was there to remind her? Don't worry, said Luke. I have a surprise for you. Just wait until spring. Sakura did. She waited. The days grew warmer. And then... The entire city burst to life, flowers blooming on every corner by the river, both its shores blazed bright with cherry blossoms. Huge crowds of people had gathered to admire them. There were pink balloons, music, picnics, and a parade, and even a marching band. Sakura and Luke found a quiet place to sit with their families. They ate lunch and told stories. They chatted, they played, they laughed. And Sakura knew what Obakan said was true. On a warm spring day, watching cherry blossoms bloom is always finest with friends. The end. Isn't that pretty? So those are all things you guys can always add. Look, look at the back with the little birdie on the branch. So it's Sakura's Cherry Blossoms. Okay. 
So you guys keep creating, make it your own, get inspired, go to the library, get books, learn, create, think outside the box. And I will see you again real soon. Thanks for creating with me. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart. I'll see you guys. Hearts to you. Cherry blossoms. Enjoy the spring. Bye, you guys.